live from the Zoom Studios, the 17 and New Show, starring the actor Jeff Rivero. Inviting you to join our special guest, Jill Buck from Go Green Initiative. And here we go! Welcome to the 17 and New Show. United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals Show. Our guest on tonight's show is Jill Buck. She's the founder of the Go Green Initiative, the host of Go Green Radio, the author of the book, 47 Things You Can Do for the Environment, and she was a Navy officer. Speaking of the Navy, why do Navy SEALs dive off backwards? Because if they dove off forwards, they'd still be in the boat. <laughs> Out of all the days in a year, which days do soldiers like the least? March 4th! <laughs> I was in the library the other day, and I found a book that had never been checked out before. It was by an English author, and the name of it was How to Defend Your Fort. Oh, the author's name? Sir Render. The prices for next week's episode just doubled. Hopefully, Jill Buck has a better sense of humor than these people. <laughs> and finally, what do you call a high-ranking officer that doesn't recycle? General waste. <laughs> <laughs> we have a great show for you tonight. Jill Buck's going to be out here. But first, here's a commercial break from our sponsor, the United Nations. We can be. We must be. The first generation to end extreme poverty. The generation most determined to fight injustice and inequalities. The generation that saves the planet from climate change. And this is how it will get done. The global goals. A 15-year plan for everyone, everywhere. With no one left behind. We, we will live in a world where nobody anywhere lives in extreme poverty. Where no one goes hungry. Where no one wakes in the morning. Asking if there will be food today. We, we will live in a world where no child has a diet. Of diseases we know how to cure. And where proper health care is a lifelong right for us all. We will live in a world where everyone goes to school. And education gives us the knowledge and skills for a fulfilling life. We will live in a world where all girls and all women have equal opportunities to thrive and be powerful and safe. We cannot succeed if half the world is held back. We will live in a world where all people can get clean water and proper toilets at home, at school, and at work. We will live in a world where there is sustainable energy for everyone. Heat, light, and power for the whole planet without destroying the planet. We will live in a world where economies prosper. A new wealth leads to decent jobs for everyone. And we will live in a world where our industry our infrastructure and our best innovations are not just used to make money, but to all make all our, our lives better. We will live in a world where prejudices and extremes of inequality are defeated. Inside our countries and between different countries. Where people live in cities and communities that are safe and progressive and support everyone who lives there. Where we replace what we consume. Planet where we put back what we take out of the earth. We live in a world that is decisively rolling back the threat to climate, climate change. change. Where we restore and protect the, the life in our, our oceans, oceans and seas. We <laughs> restore and protect life on land. The forests, animals, the earth itself. With peace between and inside countries. Where all governments are open. And answer to us for what they do at home and abroad. And the justice rules. With everyone equal before the law. We're all countries and we their people work together in partnerships of all kinds to make these global goals, goals a reality for everyone, everywhere. These are the United Nations global goals for sustainable development. Let's, Let's get, get to work. work. Let's make it happen.
Welcome back from our sponsor's break, the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. I am 100% thrilled to introduce our next guest, Jill Buck. She is a pioneer for environmental education. She's the founder of Go Green Radio. She was also a Naval officer and she's the author of a book, The 47 Things You Can Do for the Environment. Jill, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It's great to be with you and the wonderful students at Yosemite High School. Well, I'm ready to start with our first question of the night. Jill, what was some of the background and infrastructure that helped lift you up to get where you were going, to start Go Green Radio, to be a pioneer for environmental education, and to author a book? You bet, Jeff. Um, I would say that, you know, actually my time in the Navy was very helpful. Um, I was back in the Navy in the early 90s. And at that time, President Clinton was our commander in chief. And he had just signed an order that required the entire government, federal government, including the Department of Defense, to recycle paper. And of all the things that stuck with me, there were many things, many good lessons that I learned uh, from the Navy, but um, learning to recycle and the importance of recycling, why we were doing it, just really stuck with me. And so when I later became a civilian and a mom, and I could see that some of this kind of behavior was not happening in my kids' school, well, that inspired me to start the Go Green Initiative and help their schools um, become more environmentally uh, friendly. And, and actually, when you ask about the infrastructure, that's such an important question because social infrastructure is what helps all of us achieve our goals. And I think that finding other parents, at that time, it was the mom and me that really wanted to protect children from environmental harm. And finding other parents who felt the same way gave us all sort of a, a vigor and a motivation to protect the environment as another way of showing love for our children. And so that's where it all started. And now uh, the program that literally I wrote on my kitchen table is active in over 3000 schools in all 50 US states and in 73 countries around the world. I don't know if that would have been possible before the web, <laughs> but thankfully I was born in the time of the internet and, and it all worked out really well. <laughs> Well, technology has been a blessing to many of us in many different ways. And I'm also glad you were able to talk a little bit about your time in the Navy. But now I'd like to focus on the future. What, where do you see yourself in the future? Go Green Radio, authoring another book. What do you see for yourself? Absolutely. And, and actually, you know, I started this work in 2002. And at that time, I wanted to create a program that would be free to all schools because I didn't want there to ever be a monetary or financial barrier for any school community to get involved with the Go Green initiative. And so any expenses that we've ever had, you know, I went out and I did the fundraising, my board and my staff did the fundraising so that schools could get involved for free. And that was really important to me. But over time, I realized that even though, uh, you know, we threw the doors open and said, well, we'll help anyone, there were still a lot of communities who actually were bearing a, a larger burden of environmental pollution than, than the average, who still weren't as involved with our program as I would have liked for them to be. And so probably back in 2013, we started shifting our resources and our time to communities that are in one of two categories. Uh, either one, they're in environmental justice communities, meaning that on the US EPA's environmental justice screening mapping tool, they show up as a community that bears a greater burden of air or water or soil pollution. Or the second category is a community that's in a food desert. And that can be urban, that can be rural. These are communities that for a number of reasons 
do not have adequate access to healthy, nutritious food. And that's also something you can find on a map. The USDA actually has a food access atlas. And so we began to work with and, and seek to offer services to school communities in those two predicaments and to work with them to help reduce the load of environmental pollutants that their students experienced, especially while at school. So we help them with things like environmental, indoor environmental quality, which includes air quality and ventilation, water quality. Many of our schools are older buildings and they have uh, problems with lead in their pipes. So we deal with that. We help schools with nutritious food and access to sustainable food systems. Um, and we also help schools with a number of um, money saving opportunities uh, like energy conservation, water conservation, even saving money on their waste hauling by reducing waste so that they can take some of that savings and put it into healthy, environmentally friendly um, programs to help their students reach their maximum potential. So over the next few years, you're gonna see the Go Green Initiative expand on that mission, work with more and more communities that um, again, bear some of the harshest burdens of environmental pollution and degradation. That's where we wanna be. Well, thank you. I also wanted to ask, are you part of the California Resource Recovery Association? I sure am. I sure am. I'm on the school. Well, your committee has sponsored two of our activities. One of them was Star Wars, which stood for school trash and recycling. And we diverted over 1.2 tons of trash from the landfill and recycled it. And the second one was this year's Bean There Brewed That Coffee Ground Rescue. And to date, we've diverted over three tons of coffee grounds from the landfill and used them in our gardens, in our uh, flower beds, and also on grass. So would you mind telling the committee that we really appreciate them help, helping our efforts out for us? I sure will. And you know what? I, uh, I actually was the one who wrote that check to your school. That comes through the Go Green Initiative. And I'm so proud of Yosemite High School. And I'll tell you, I'll give you a little inside scoop. Each year we have a different panel of judges and um, I'm help, I help put that panel of judges together. And both years that you guys have won, the judges have been blown away by your application and your project. So we are very proud to support what you're doing at Yosemite High School. Very much. And it sounds like you do a lot of writing. So that gives me a perfect segue in <laughs> asking you about your book, 47 Things You Can Do for Your Environment. Can you That's tell it. us a little bit about that book, please? You bet. And, and I was a co-author on that. Um, it was really written with high school students in mind. Um, it was written as a, kind of a, a little template they could use for different activities, fun things to do with their friends that promote a greener lifestyle. Everything from, you know, personal care products to throwing green movie parties and, and things like that. So it's just a way for high school students to kind of dip their toe into a number of different sustainable lifestyle choices and events and activities. Um, it's also got a lot of resources in it. Um, if you look uh, in the, the back of the book, there's a lot of, of resources available as well. And it was a lot of fun to help write. Uh, it was a few years ago, but um, a lot of the, the information still stands up. <laughs> well, it's time for a commercial break. Let's learn a little bit about lunch audits. The results are going to surprise you. If you don't slow down and realize what you're doing, you might lose everything. Cause time, time goes by, goes by, it goes home, it goes home, and it don't stop, it don't stop. I say time, time The average American produces 4.4 pounds of trash per day. Multiply that by the number of students and staff at Amador, you get a total of 12,500 pounds of trash per day five days a week. As you can see, the number adds up quickly. 
but it seems like I never called it. On Tuesday, November 6th, the local leaders of the 21st Century Club conducted a waste audit of the school lunch area. Essentially, what we did was dig through and separate through your trash from lunch that day. And as you can see, there is a lot of leftover food, disposable utensils, and plastic containers. So you might be asking yourself, well, why did we do this? And the reason is that this data is essential to the addition of compost and recycle bins on campus. That being said, we need your help. Starting second semester, we will have compost and recycle bin stations out in the lunch area. So instead of throwing your trash in one bin, you will have the option to reduce the amount of trash you send to the landfill. In this way, we will prevent a lot of this trash from going to the landfill and staying there forever. With your help and participation, we can make Amador and this world more sustainable. Well, welcome back from our commercial break. I have our special guest, Jill Buck from Go Green Radio, who's an expert at interviewing. So I have to ask Jill, how are things going tonight? Are we doing okay? Doing great. This is so much fun. And I am so proud to be part of 17 and Me. I'm, I'm a big fan of the UN Sustainable uh, Development Goals. So I'm glad that you're covering that with your students. I think that's fantastic. This is the favorite part of the show where I get to ask our guest, Jill Buck, which one or more of the 17 SDGs are your favorites? And what's the passion behind that goal? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's so hard to pick, you know, just one or, or a couple because I truly believe that all 17 are vital. Um, but I go first to number six, clean water and sanitation. Um, we absolutely cannot live without clean drinking water. And yet so many places, places that have always had clean water, at least as far as people knew, even here in the US, have drinking water contamination now. It's becoming more of the norm than the exception. And I think that there are so many things that are uh, polluting our water. Our water is, is vulnerable in so many directions. And I really feel like we have to put more of our effort, more of our attention on keeping our water clean. It's not something we can take for granted. And we used to think of it when I was a kid as, as a third world country problem. And, and I can remember raising money for UNICEF while I was trick or treating to go towards helping third world countries with their clean water supply. But now it's happening in my own hometown in California. We have contamination in our water that is extremely difficult and expensive to treat. And so, um, I, you know, like I said, we can't live without clean water and we all need to pay attention to that. I think if I were gonna pick a second one, it would be number 11, sustainable cities. I think that when human beings gather, whether it's in a small town, a medium-sized town or a large town, when we think about um, gathering and living and communing in places that are in harmony with our natural resources and with one another, it creates a more peaceful and enjoyable life for everyone. You know, when we live in places that where there's traffic and there's, uh, you know, just discombobulated systems, you know, when things are hard to get to, or it's difficult to get things done, that creates stress in our lives. And we're not gonna have the meaningful and happy interactions with each other that we could have if we lived in communities that were well thought out to be harmonious in, in with the earth and with one another. So. I think those are my two favorite, but uh, like I said, I love them all. I think they're all vital. Well, the time's really flown by tonight, Jill. I've had a great time. But before you go, would you mind if I ask, are there some words of encouragement or inspiration that you could share with our students and our audience? You know, with the pandemic, things have been stay at home. And there's been a lot of stress on people lately. Would you mind giving us some words of encouragement to move forward? 
that, Jeff. I think for me, the greatest accomplishments, the things I'm most proud of in my life are the relationships I have with other people, not just my family and friends, but through the work that I've done, I've been able to work with people of all ages, of all backgrounds in many different communities and countries. And for me, those relationships and that ability to be able to collaborate with other people, share common goals, share ideas across many generations and over space and time, even when it's over Zoom, is what I relish the most. And I think uh, it's what I treasure the most is those relationships with people. So no matter what your goals are, no matter where you go in life or what field you, you want to enter, just, I would say, you know, keep those relationships with other people at the forefront of your mind, protect them, nurture them. They'll bring you tremendous joy, no matter what you choose to do uh, in your life. Well, it's been an absolute thrill to interview the host from Go Green Radio. Jill, I really appreciate your time. Uh, is there anything that you would like to add? I know I kind of hogged up all the questions, but if you have something that you'd like to add, I'd really appreciate it. You bet. You know, we've in the last year, we've really begun to focus as a country um, on justice. And it means so many different things. Um, and it has so many applications. But my organization and I myself am very committed to environmental justice. And if that's a new term to you, I've got good news. There's a lot of resources out there. Even the US EPA has a page on environmental justice. And I invite you to get out there, learn more about what it is and the many ways that you can get involved in helping to bring environmental justice to everyone um, to, so that they can live in a place where they are not encumbered, they are not hampered by undue unfair amounts of environmental pollution and degradation. So I would like to promote, you know, environmental justice for all. All right, Jill, before you go tonight, I wanted to ask, do you have any websites or links that you'd like to uh, forward to our audience to help them out with their uh, education, uh, environmental education inroads? You bet. Well, the Go Green Initiative website is kind of the epicenter of all of our communication hubs. We've got all of our social media and everything we do um, linked there. So if you go to gogreeninitiative.org, that'll help you find all that we're up to. And actually that website is about to get a revamp. So it's going to look pretty cool in a couple of three more weeks. And, um, and then if you want to listen to my weekly radio show, it airs live every Friday morning from nine to 10. But after we air it live, it's archived on voiceamerica.com slash show slash 1303 slash go dash green dash radio. You can just Google go green radio and it will come up. And every week we have um, some really great guests and subject matter experts on all kinds of sustainability topics. Well, Jill, when I bumped into you in Oregon at the California Green Schools Conference, uh, it was a real pleasure to watch your presentation and then talk to you afterwards. I knew you're a great person and I was really hoping that you'd be on the show tonight. So thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate it. It's my pleasure, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great, great honor. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode of the 17 and Me Show. If you would like to learn more about the 17 SDGs or teach it in your classroom, please go to teachsdgs.org. Looking forward to seeing you on our next episode. Have a great night. Thank you.